So we were dealing with personality. So we will resume from what we have stopped yesterday. We basically dis discussed about Sigmund Freud, his mechanisms like the structure of uh, awareness and the structure of consciousness and also the different psychosexual developmental stages and also the defense mechanisms like the Daniel displacement, projection, rationalization, reaction formation, regression, impression, sublimation, etc. And we were also discussing about Carl Jung's idea of collective consciousness. That is, we all have something which we always inherit from our ancestors. So we human beings, we have some popular figures which we inherit from our pair, from our ancestors. So this is in deep in our mind. This is known as collective unconscious. It includes powerful father, innocent child, nurture and mother. So we have typical examples of things. We always tend to be a powerful father. We always wanted to be an innocent child. We always want to turn hero. This is something which is deeply rooted in our mind, which we wanted to which we wanted to exhibit to others. This is the collective unconscious thing. And we see both a famous women psychologist and she was Karen Honey. And what she was feeling, she was talking about the basic anxiety. So according to her, how our personality is being developed as a child, we might have a basic anxiety. And this basic anxiety is something which is feeling of a child. Feeling of a child. It's, Feeling of a child who is being always isolated and helpless in a potentially hostile world. And I was telling that this is very, very possible in contemporary times or contemporary um, world or Indian context or any context wherein children are left isolated and they always have a sense of insecurity which is developed even from the childhood. And I was talking about Alfred Adler and he was talking that we human beings always have we are guided or we always have a tendency of feeling of inferiority. So we always wanted for superiority. We always wanted to be superior in whatever, wherever. We always wanted to be the center of attention. That is why we are always focusing on our inferiority. Suppose you are going to a party. So you are always conscious of your hair. You know that your hair is something which makes you conscious all the time. And now you shape your hair in a good manner because you know that your hair is something which is creating a basic inferiority. So in order to be a superior being, you tend to focus. And I was discussing about trait perspective. I was talking how we have surface traits and we have source traits. And I was talking the example of um, Mother Teresa, etc., who was having these people have some basic characteristics or trait like what um, the help, helping behavior charity things that is being is that can be easily distinguishable that is the um, basic uh, type now we have something called icing so icing was proposing that there is a particular way in which we can classify people based on the four types what are the four basic types according to icing he was telling that people can be introverted or neurotic people can be introverted or stable we can be extraverted neurotic and people can be extraverted and stable so this is where we stopped yesterday and today we'll be focusing on socio cognitive factors in learning then we will be dealing with humanistic psychology and we will be will be dealing with indian concept of personality that is gunas etc and we will see how we can assess human personality and also, this is a big chapter. Factors influencing personality developments. What all factors relate to the personality we have? So we'll try to complete this chapter and start next chapter today only. So are you with me or sleeping? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So this is very interesting. What is social cognitive perspective? So given by Albert Bendura. So you should always remember when we are learning something from the society, when we are learning something from the media, when we are learning something from our parents, what is it? What is this? It is just Albert Bendura. So what he was telling, our behavior is not just due to our own fault or our behavior is not just lie with ours. The environment to act in a way 
and resulting behavior. So our behavior is influenced by the interaction between person and social context. It is not us alone who are reason for our own behavior. The social context plays a major role. So our thoughts and actions, uh, actions are with regard to the social world. We are not functioning independently. They are being part of a society. And, but though we are part of society, we have our own control. Suppose if the society is changing, you have the choice or you should have the ability to regulate yourself. That is the very significance of humans, but you are influenced by society. What is a success? Success is something when you control your environment, you should have a control or self-regulation in the environment things. Okay, this is what has been discussed by Albert Bandura. So we have the behavioral factors, cognitive factors and environmental factors. And these three factors in back together introducing one's behavior. So, and this Bandura, no? he was always saying that so what Stuart Sigmund Freud was telling, everything is guided by your unconscious behavior or motives. Now, Albert Bandura was telling, nothing has a role in unconscious thing. Everything is determined by the society and ourselves. And our thoughts, memory, everything depends on the society and person. So this is very important. Can you feel this? Sigmund Freud, what will come here? I want it in seconds, answers. Please tell one of the psychologists and the opposite thing. Please match it. Start, slow or start. Anyone you can choose and take the something which is matching from here. Ma'am, uh, the fourth one. Okay, Bandura. Yeah. Mm. What will be the answer? Ma'am, fifth one. Very good. Bandura, self efficacy. Next. Anything you can fifth one. Six Maslow. Yes, ma'am. The second very, one. Very good, very good. Need hierarchy. Next, summer. Ma'am, uh, Jung is the fourth one. Jung, Jung, Carl Jung. Okay, Jung. The fourth one. Very good, collective and conscious. Then? Mm, then I... Uh, Ma'am, how do you pronounce his name? Hmm? Ma'am, how do you pronounce his name? Jung, Jung, Carl Jung. Okay. Ma'am, the one below him. One below him, I sink, I sink. I sink match, matches with, C matches with? Ma'am, the first one. Very good. Introverted, stable. Now, who is remaining? Why are you avoiding my Sigmund Freud? Who is remaining? Ma'am, Freud with sublimation. Freud with sublimation. So I hope that I can understand that you have some basic ideas. So I'm happy. Now we have the humanistic perspective. So according to this view, what humanistic psychologist or humanistic perspective says, each individual has within a creative force or a potential to grow. We can't say that environment is responsible for behavior. We can't say that a person cannot be changed, etc., etc. Why? We have an inner motive to grow. We all have that inner motive to strive towards excellence and to grow up. That is self. We have self. You don't know what is inside me, right? I don't know what is inside you. Not I'm talking about the internal organs. I'm talking about the inner thoughts and feelings. So based on the humanistic perspective, they claim that all human beings are innately good, right? People tend to comment, you are so good, but when you sleep, otherwise you are so bad. So this is like all human beings innately are, they are good. And the major, and this, this perspective, humanistic perspective is known as the third force in psychology, third force in psychology. So the first force, I think it is psychoanalysis, second force is behaviorism, and third force is the humanistic perspective. So they are valuing human as a, as a person. They're always believing and trusting the innate ability of human beings to, Group. And who are the main proponents of 
humanistic perspective we have Carl Rogers and Abraham Maslow so when we see Abraham Maslow we know that he has proposed the hierarchy of needs we have we are studying it for the third time i think so according to this maslow self actualization is very important when is self actualization we cross all the stages and at last we reach the self actualization in which we have a sense of self understanding we are creative we are enjoying we are appreciating the positive aspects of life like privacy we are enjoying independence this is a stage of full full excitement where you are at the utmost independence and happiness we human beings always strive to be in this particular stage this is being said by abraham maslow now we have the famous carl rogers what is this carl rogers talking about he was talking about the actualizing tendency that is the same thing innate drive to maintain and enhance human organisms so according to carl rogers we all have a self concept i have a self concept of myself what i am doing what i do what i should not do what to what to go where should i where should not i go how to interact with people how not to interact with people i have my idea of self concept right so i always wanted to mean that that particular self concept so people are motivated to act in accordance with the self concept we have a self concept concept i i might be a person who wanted to roam around who wanted to watch movies in weekend who wanted to chill back and sit back and enjoy an ice cream with the television series etc so th this is something which i like right this is my self concept so based on each people they will have their own way of self concept or their view view their own view of viewing themselves so so whenever we are finding that something is distorting our self concept or something is not working with regard to our self concept what we will do we tend to feel frustrated that is we are very disturbed now how we can get back from that situation that is unconditional positive regard this is very very important in clinical setting especially in therapeutic settings suppose you went to psychologist he is treating you you have to open up right then only psychologist will be able to give a proper therapeutic approach and support to you right but how we will open up you should feel that kind of trust you should feel that you can share anything to the therapist you should feel that whatever you speak to him will be confidential and first of all the therapist is non judgmental you are telling him that i went to this person and i had i had this kind of experience or you are telling that you um, you are telling about the deepest secrets that you do etc etc this is for the unconditional positive regard and that is you are you are being fully accepted so this kind of thing helps in getting back to the normal state that is we have the physiological needs we have the safety needs we have the esteem needs we have the self actualization and we have the self transcendence this is the maslow's hierarchy of needs what is physiological needs that is the food and hunger safety feeling of safety protection etc belongingness love needs friendship etc esteem needs you are success in your work etc self actualization means you are in your higher sense of potential where you are able to enjoy everything is what is for you self transcendence is like a meditative state usually we associate these things with buddhism jainism etc where they where they abandon all the material lives and they are into state of self transcendence or in a spiritual kind of meditation now let's move to the indian concept of personality what is this indian concept of personality that is the concept of gunas so actually in english we may say it as personality in india based on the ayurveda philosophy or ancient philosophy we tend to call it as gunas gunas means quality in malayalam we used to say gunas is quality only so what are the three qualities namely we have sattva rajas and tamas so we have the samkhya theory it is an ancient school of school of philosophy samkhya theory by by kabila muni he was the person who have given this samkhya theory so there is the sattva rajas and tamas so bhagavad gita also have talked about these three kind of personalities or gunas 
So what happens in Sattva Guna, there will be certain characteristics. In Rajas Guna, there will be certain characteristics. In Tamas Guna, there will be certain characteristics. So if I am a Sattvic person, I will have certain features. If I'm a Rajasic person, I will have certain features. If I'm a Tamas person, I will have certain features. And these three, this two can combine, two can combine, etc. Let's see what this each of this uh, gunas contains. If you are a sattva guna person, you will have this thing. You always will give importance to truth. You will not lie. You will have a, a sense of gravity. You are always duty oriented. You are disciplined. You are detachment. You are cleanliness. You are, have mental balance, sense of control, determination, and sharp intelligence. And if you are of a rajas guna, you have attributes that includes vigorous activity, desire for sense gratification, dissatisfaction, envy, materialistic point of view. And if you are a tamasic person, you always will be anger, you will have arrogance, you will have mental imbalance, you will have depression, laziness, procrastinus, feelingness, and helplessness. Now, tell me, do you vote in these three now? What do you identify yourself in which, which is dominating in you? You can combine it and say, or you can say it in it's like separate, separate. No, speak. Mom. I won't judge. Come on, I'm a psychologist. The thing is, when you say now, you are you will actually read it and you will never forget it. I don't want to know who are you, but I'm just, I just want you to be, I was want you, you guys to read it at least once. So I'm asking you, in what do you identify yourself? Ma'am, third one, ma'am. Ma third one. Okay, Summer. Yes, ma'am, third one. Third one. Okay. I don't identify myself as Tamas. Tham um, often I have this kind of low mood feelings, etc. But I tend to rely on music. I tend to rely on meditation. I have meditation apps in my mobile phone. So I used to listen to these. We can't say that none is not depressed in this world. Everyone has their own problems. And every problem is just a matter of time. Like, but you just imagine, though we have problems, we are eating, we are sleeping, right? We are doing these basic things, right? Which means if you're capable of doing these basic things, the other things can also be dealt in an easy manner, right? It's just the procrastination or the feeling that I am not well, the feeling that I don't have the energy to do, these have to be changed. So basically, you may be very energetic, you may not be lazy, but you have an inherent feeling I'm not well, I don't want to do anything. I just wanted to lay in the bed and scroll Instagram, FB, etc. So this kind of feeling has to be dealt with. Mental imbalance, uh, I think it's, if it is too much, we have to consult it. Uh, we should take a medical help. In India, we are reluctant to take medical help, but it's very good, you know. Seeking a counseling is a very good thing that you can do to yourself in a day because we should not treat ourselves in a bad manner and arrogance it is very normal in your age and in my age anger is very normal but every time you are angry it is problematic laziness is it's okay but too much laziness will destroy your career and your thing we can live with laziness right you can see people at the age of 35 36 simply laying in bed without earning much they're in their own la 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 world but what what, what happens they might be dreaming a lot, but they not be. They might not be able to achieve that particular dreams. You see, as we grow up, as we we might think that at the age of adolescence, I am a person of truth. I am a person of charity. I am a person of this. I am a person of that. Nothing matters when you reach at 25, 26. What you you realize that you have to be self independent in economic terms. This is very very important. And if you are economically independent and if you are financially stable. We can achieve something. You might have troubled relationships. You might have troubled married life. You might have troubled friends, family, significant others. But a little sort of financial independence is something which you can, which can save you. This laziness can also be tackled through this uh, financial independence. So always try to be financially independent, especially girls in Indian context. 
Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. No, assessing human personality. How can we assess human personality? I'm, I was telling you what all the theories behind personality, the, the context of Indian personality, etc. So how can we know in what personality group we belong to? There are a lot of tools. Either we can interview people, we can ask a person to rate himself on a particular scale of measurement, or we can place a particular person in a particular situation, etc. So by observing how the person tackles a particular situation, we can know what kind of person this person is. So what are the projective tests? Projective tests, there are, there are special kind of tests in which ambiguous material is used and the person whose personality is being tested has to give his or her meaning in interpretation. You have studied it, right? I don't uh, think you may not be able to recall. Still, I'm asking, uh, can you tell me one of the projective tests we have studied? Anybody? To just to make me happy that you are recalling something. Any projective tests we studied? Mm, the ink blot test. Very good. The ink blot test. And I was give, showing you the picture in Google and I was asking what the picture was actually making any sense or not. So, ink blot test and thematic perception test. What happens here? Suppose it is used in serious mental cases or mental illness, wherein you are in front of a psychologist and he will show you certain pictures and you have to tell him what the pictures signify. So, you are basically this projective test lay on projection, which means the psychologist is trying to read your thoughts and feelings through the answers you give. Suppose you're telling that I am watching an eagle or I'm, I'm, I'm watching a butterfly. He will ask you certain questions based on that. Or we can say that certain kind of people who are suffering from particular kind of disorders, they will have some kind of visions which are very similar. Suppose I suppose from, uh, suppose I don't take my example, I don't want to be, suppose Radha suffers from multi -pers multiple personality disorder and Ram suffers from bipolar disorder and Sita suffers from bipolar disorder. Now, Sita and what's that? the person I mentioned, both have similar traits if they are bipolar. bipolar. Now, they will identify the figure as butterfly. They will identify it in a similar manner. So based on that psychologists, tend to project the person's inner behavior. So basically we use Rochar Inglot test. That is what happens, a person is on a set of 10 symmetrical inputs and asked to say what he or she sees in each of them. The response given is interpreted by the psychologist. That happens in Rochar Inglot. And what, what happens in that thematic exception? Certain photographs are shown and nothing is being written. And the person is asked to make a story. So what story you will make? Suppose you're a patient. You will make something, uh, something of a story which is actually based on something which is hidden in your, mood, in your mind, right? Automatically, the feelings of you, the feelings of isolation, the feelings of being non being the feelings of being deceived by the partner, etc. Your thoughts, your your doubts, etc. will come when you create a particular story. That is what happens in thematic perception text. So these are the two personality assessment texts that we normally use. So coming to factors influencing personality development, what are the factors influencing? So basically genes is very important, right? The genetic factors. What is genetic factors? I will inherit something from my parents. Suppose my mother is a short temper person. There is chances that I also will be particularly short tempered. Why? Because I am her daughter and I have inherited some sort of gene from her. So our paternal or maternal factors, maternal means motherly factors and paternal means fatherly factors. These will have a role in determining who we are as a person is. So 15 to 15 person is right. Some people will inherit less like in 100, they will just inherit 15 from their parents. Some 50 person inherit. Similar, you might say that the daughter and mother is same. They are too cruel. Why? Basically, they are genetically linked, so they will behave in that manner only. And next is the early experience, right? As a child, how well you were treated, how well you were adjusted in society. So these things has a very role. They are immediate environment. Suppose you are, really, you are living in a 
struggling family now the struggles of family things the struggling the small small kids who are growing continuously these kind of things will matter to us child now is the primary groups primary group means family family is the primary group so family plays a very role your early relationship your interaction with siblings from your siblings you might be learning certain things right so your siblings will also influences and we have the culture what culture we are living i am from kerala so definitely i will I definitely i will have a kerala culture in dealing with people events and things you all are you might be from different different states and each will have their own vibrations so child is expected to learn to behave in the manner of the culture right we all always taught in a, by our parents that behave this way behave that way do this way do that way, etc why it is to the influence with the particular culture so genetic factors early experience primary groups and culture plays a major role in determining how we as a person is name the gunas mentioned in the indian approach we have the rajas tamas and sattva three categories of personal assessment we have the self assessment or self reporting we have the interviews we have the projective test name two projective test of personality we have the rochar in blood test and the thematic apperception test what are the genetic factors that influence personality what are the factors that influence personality first is the genetic factors then we have the environmental factors we have the primary group then we have the culture etc which tend to influence our personality so this is the end of the chapter was this clear to you yes sir. yes ma'am this is a simple chapter the next chapter is the continuation of this chapter only that is the personality assessment so we can take it in a structurally because these are continuous and we have enough time to start a new lesson today so we'll start it what is personal assessment so last chapter we were discussing how personality can be assessed we can use interview we can use project test we can do self uh, rated ratings etc for knowing personality now let's see just a minute now we can see how can we assess personality so we will be doing study assess personality based on different theoretical perspective this is very very interesting if you are going to be a psychologist in the future you can definitely have a base from here only so there are two ways of assessing personality traits or not just psychologists you can assess people it's wrong but you can understand how people behave two there are two ways of assessing personality first is you are asking a set of questions in which a person has to sort her opinions feelings and action so i can post post certain questions to you based on that particular response of response made by you i can actually assess you as a person i am asking a set of questions from 1 to 10 and you are replying based on that question now with that particular question i can know what kind of a person you have for it, for this purpose for asking questions a personality inventory personality inventory inventory means a personality questionnaire can be used in the second approach a person makes assessments of a person's traits based on the prior knowledge of that person or direct observation of the person this is known as writing scale approach because i have already know you three i don't know because we haven't met but i know some way in the way you respond in class and the way you talk to me what kind of person you are or the way you share with me what kind of people you are so based on that by directly observing you i can actually make a sense of the person that is known as writing scale approach so let's see about the personality inventories what are the personality inventories so basically inventories personality inventory question is so in which I, there will be a set of questions and you yes or no type or uh, truly agree disagree type questions and you have to answer if a person answers yes to the question ask it there suppose this is a question do you stay in the background in social situation and if you are answering yes which means you are an ex which means background in social situation you stay in the background it means it is an indication of introversion right suppose there is a party happening and you are standing in the back you don't want to be in the party and you don't want to dance which means you are an introvert so this, this way each and every question is assessing what kind of person you are and we have the famous this is available in internet you can assess yourself is very interesting you will get to know what kind of person you are the examples are 16 pf 16 personality questionnaire and we have the minnesota multiface personality inventory we have the minnesota multiface personality inventory and we have the wait. 
Minnesota multi personality in questionnaire, and we have the uh, 16 factor PM. So these inventories are very, very useful, and these will tell about the basic reactions of people. So we can also assess our own characteristics. So in some questionnaire, now they will be asking you to describe your self confidence level. They'll be asking if I'm giving you a rating from one to 10, where you raise your self confidence. Now tell me, I'm giving you, I'm asking you, are you self confident? Rate yourself from one to 10. Come on. Mem rate to what? Rate. I'm giving you an example. Like I'm asking you a question. Are you self-confident slogan? Now you can rate me one to ten. Choose numbers. One means you are not at all self-confidence. Ten means you are extremely confident. Nine, eight, seven. There are also many numbers. So if I'm giving a scale of one to ten. In which place, in which number you choose to rate yourself as self-confident? Now, is the question clear? Yes, ma'am. Tell me, rate yourself. Mm -hmm. I will rate myself in eight. Mum six. Oh my God, you are very, very little. Children are rating yourself so slowly. How you will leave? Come on. Mum self you confidence as in what exactly? Self confidence. You define yourself. What is self confidence? You know who are you, and you are believing in the things you are doing. That is self-confidence, right? You can deal with issues, whatever happens. You're trusting the process in which you're going. You're trusting yourself. These are kind of self-confidence, right? Sriniti, how do you will rate yourself? Seven, ma'am. Seven. So can you tell me the three? What happened to the other three? Eight, nine, ten. Uh, I don't know, ma'am. I just feel like I'm just in the seven right now. Okay, Sloga. So basically, mm -hmm. can you tell me your problems? I just wanted to hear. Like, what do you, uh, what is your general problems in your life as of now? You, because you're sitting in home, uh, you're attending the online classes and you don't have to rush to the city every day to attend classes or, um, you don't want to work to support your family, right? So what will be your problem? I'm Actually, confident in myself. I only don't... Start. You don't believe... You don't have confidence in yourself? No, ma'am. I have confidence in myself. I only don't like talking to other people. Okay. Okay. About your confidence. No, ma'am. Like, uh, if I have to talk to a group of people, I don't like that. Okay, okay, okay. You wanted to be in your own world, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Srinathi, can you list some um, of the problems you see in every day? When you wake up, oh, that kind of expression. Attending classes is first, I noted it. Then second, tell me. Maybe when I was going to school, ma'am, like the regular basic school. Mm -hmm. Then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. To eat. To eat. Oh, I forgot. Mm. I guess that's it now. Okay. So, everyone, everyone will have, but at this age, you don't, you should not have much problems. You can have problems, but you don't perceive it as big problem because bigger problems are on the way. So, assessment in psychoanalytic approach, right? Psychoanalytic means segment truth. How Freud assessed persons based on his personality um, theory. So Freud was basically talking about unconscious conflicts and motives are the reason for people's behavior. So he was telling that we all have an inner self or unconscious thing. And this is being hidden from others. We don't want to people to show that. That we have an indirect self which in which we have unsolved motives, unsolved goals, etc. So through projected tests, actually we are trying to 
recover that particular unconscious complex and motive source. Project it as mostly rely on Sigmund Freud idea, Sigmund Freud idea of psychoanalysis. So in this approach, what, what happens? Psychoanalysis want to obtain the knowledge of unconscious presence in a person's psyche. Right? I will have my own psyche. You all have your own psyche. Now the psychologist wanted to get things from your un unconscious psyche. So you are being presented with an ambiguous material and you are asked to speak about that particular material or includes. Now this ambiguous material is leaving you with no choice. You can't manipulate much yourself. We human beings continuously manipulate right, in, in our lives. So we can't manipulate much. So you will be automatically opening up things. This is said that behind Rosha test and thematic apperception test. The same thing we have discussed. In Dash, a person has to many questions about the way or she reacts to different situations. What? In projective test, uh, not projective test, in, in this thing, uh, this thing. I think this might be the personality inventories. Okay, in personality inventories, like the questionnaire, the person has to answer many questions. A description of person stays based on prayer knowledge is called dash approach. This is a straight approach. Dash uses indirect symbolic meaning, which is interpreted by the psychoanalyst to uncover unconscious conflicts. Projective test. Dash test consists of pictures containing human peaks about which a person is required to tell a story. Tell me what is the answer for the. You have to make a story out of it. Mom, did you scroll down? Yeah. Mom, it's still stuck on the primary groups and culture. Primary groups. Primary groups. Mom, your screen is stuck on that page. No. Yes, ma'am. So, dash test consists of pictures containing human figures about which a person is required to tell a story. Thematic perception test will, it consists of pictures, right? So, let, uh, let's do assessment in humanistic perspective. So, I was talking in last chapter that in humanistic perspective, we are considering human beings as someone who is positive and who has an innate potential to grow or who has an innate potential to rise up beyond any difficulties. So what happens in this type of uh, assessment? What kind of questions will be asked? I am a confident person. I am often nervous. I'm a sincere, hardworking student. These kind of questions will be asked and you wanted to rate it yes or no. So if I wanted to assess your personality via humanistic perspective, I will ask these kind of questions and based on that, you will be responding. So what is happening? Your potential to grow, your potential to see yourself as confident is being reflected. Now we have the assessment of gunas. So what is this assessment of gunas? We have Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. We have studied it in other chapter. So when a person who is extremely truthful, detached and helpful is likely to be Hayun Sattva, it is directly observable, right? When a person is, so through questionnaires or interviews or asking, we can know in which group Rajas or Rajas Tamas or Sattvik you belong to. In the dash approach assessment focus on how a person perceives his or her world. What approach? Hmm? In trait approach, okay. In trait approach, the assessment focus on how a person behaves and perceives her world. A person's willingness to expose his or her inner stature to self others to refer to the tendency for we are expressing our internal feelings, inner things. That is psychoanalysis. Assessment in Indian Guna approach attempts to find out 
which kuna is dash in an individual personality hidden dash method which is used i think it can be humanism the dash method which is used as a trait approach is also used for guna perspective so this is end of this chapter too you know why this chapter ends so easily just because already from the last chapter krishna already from the last chapter you learned about the things you learned about the theories now you just wanted to apply these concepts here right you studied kind of personality types of personality things of personality etc now just use that theory here and tell what is being asked suppose just imagine we studied in last chapter the psychoanalysis and its major theoristic principle now when it come to assessment you are just applying that particular technique and are using this particular base in assessing of personality so nothing is there in this chapter just the addition of what you have learned in the previous chapter in the previous chapter to we were dealing with gunas in this chapter to we are just dealing with gunas so this is very very small chapter that is the reason why i told you that i'll be completing this particular yes, chapter yeah. today let's see what are the contents in the next chapter this is this might be very very interesting to you psychological disorders right when we hear this field as a domain of psychology you always wonder what are the basic characteristics or features that constitute a psychological disorder or why some people are affected with depression so easily or why some people are affected with bipolar or why mental illness happens to particular people at part only at particular age and why some children are born as mentally ill right that, that is very very pathetic in which you don't know why you are born and brought up in that particular manner you might have seen those children who are affected with down syndrome asperger syndrome or with some chromosomal anomalies and they will suffer in a drastic manner so you really have to know what are the causal factors which are contributing to that particular psychological disorder so we will be learning in this that let's just in the term psychological disorder what is a psychological disorder when you will say that you are mentally ill then enumerate the major types of abnormalities what are the major types of abnormal behavior when can you say that a person is behaving in an abnormal manner symptoms of various psychological disorders you might think when i used to study i will think that oh i have this i have that so even more disorders i think everything i have anxiety we may tend to think but it's it's very very normal when we study, study psychological disorders it's very very normal to perceive or identify ourselves that we are suffering out of that particular disorder but it's not like this when we classify someone as suffering from psychological disorder when we cross that particular limit of ceiling in which the criterion of abnormality comes depression happens normally or mood things will be there will be a sort of anxiety but if it wanted to be a disorder then it has to cross a particular boundary or line after that particular boundary line you can say that you are affected with a mental disorder so i have to inform one more thing that please post assessment you are not doing the assessments properly please post it if you have any doubts in solving mcqs we'll do it in the class no problem do you want me to do all the mcq test in the class i'll do we'll do tomorrow okay yes ma'am i think fill in the blanks might be tough so we'll be doing it tomorrow in the class you have mobile phones with you or will you be do, able to do from the laptop at the simultaneous time yes ma'am using phone for the class just using ma'am using the phone for the class Oh, i think you can uh, go back to the particular app uh, might not be possible or you can just mark the answers and you can later enter it in the app okay yes ma'am yes ma'am so one thing is that we have completed the basics now we will be focusing on the applied things like we will be focusing on disorders part we will be focusing on how we will use psychology to live a proper life in social settings how you will deal with health psychology how can we stop step substance abuse how can we actually change people's behavior how can i actually understand how people think about you 
or how can you behave uh, in a better manner for a proper adjustment in society these kind of application part will be dealing in the later chapters uh, how many chapters were left like we counted that day right from 20 i think 32 chapters are remaining right we have in total 32 there are total 25 i think 25 only ma'am and then five optional chapters are there so five uh, you have to choose from that right yes ma'am yes ma'am so uh, after 25 we'll have a open class in which we will discuss about how the class will be going on like if some of you are choosing the same uh, chapters we can so now just five chapters are remaining so let me see the headings psychological disorders we have then we have the group process and i think then we have the person perception now interpersonal attraction love relationship these kind of topics so uh, from 20 to 25 these topics are like social psychology and this might be very very interesting so um, we will do it in uh, i think these chapters now this will be very small and after this completion of 25 plus your optional 